Hi everybody, um, you may not believe it, but Britain's going through a bit of a heat wave at the moment, even though we've just had a wonderful thunderstorm, which has cleared the air, and it's also cooled the temperature down quite a bit. Now I love the hot weather, but I don't work particularly well in the hot weather, and so it would seem neither does our fridge. You see, the hotter the temperature, the less efficient it is at creating nice cool refrigeration inside the fridge. Now the solution would be, well, just work the fridge flat out, but that's not a particularly good idea, is it? Because if you're working something flat out, invariably it's stressed and it's going to break. There is a couple of tips that I've noticed online, a couple of people are doing, in order to improve the cooling around the back of the fridge. Now our fridge is a Thetford, it's got two vents on it, like most of the fridges in this respect, and let me show you what the big problem actually is. So this is our fridge here, and you can see we've got the two vents, so we've got the one at the bottom, one at the top. And the idea is very simple. Cool air is pulled in at the bottom, and hot air is pushed out at the top. As the cool air comes in the bottom, it rises, and it's heated by some thermal uh, veins at the top here, at the back of the fridge, which is where the chemistry takes place, where it creates cold air from hot, etc. That then needs to be exhausted, it exhausts up this way, and so as it exhausts out this way, more cool air is pushed in at the bottom. That's the theory. The problem is, is that there's not enough flow of air around the back of the fridge. So what a couple of people have been doing is they've just been very simply removing these fridge vents and that's helped things no end at all. But a couple of other people have added a couple of fans into the back of this uh, to exhaust even more hot air and that's made a massive drastic difference. So I thought today, We'll have a go at doing a very simple, very quick bodge of putting some fans into the back here and see how we get on. So first things first, let's get the fridge vents off. Now, if you've never taken a fridge vent off before, usually at the top here, underneath, there's two clips, one there, one there. I'm sure the Dometic works in the same way. This is a Thetford um, fridge. And then pull the fridge vent off the top and it goes down and that's it. Right, with the grill now removed, let's have a closer look inside the back of the fridge and we'll see what we can do to help here. Well, the first thing that we have is we have this protective mesh which comes out and we're going to be using this in a minute, I think. So as we look inside, you can see here we've got uh, some pipe work and we've got some veins here. Now these veins are designed to exhaust and to dissipate a lot of the heat and this is where our problem basically is coming from, that this is not coming out through the fridge. If we swing round as well, you can see that what we have here just as well. This is the fridge vent for the gas as well, this is the flue. So what we want to do is we want to be able to put some sort of fan or something in there in order to assist with the heat, heat coming out of the back of the fridge. So what can we do? Well, it's very simple actually. What we need to do is get ourselves some old computer fans. So this is what we've bought. We've bought three of these online, a uh, cost of 10 quid for three of them, a bit expensive really for what they are, but uh, I've got three of these. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix them to the back here. So what I'm doing is I'm just having a look around to see how I can fit these in. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a wooden frame around them and I'm gonna get three in here, I think. Uh, two, and three. To be honest with you, the third one I don't think is going to be that critical because it's going to be at that end, but the other two, most at this end, I think these are going to be the critical ones. And I've got two trains of thought here. I could either blow cold air in or I can exhaust warm air out. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust the hot air out. Um, so that means they go around that way. And I'm going to build a frame around these as well to hold them in place. And then what I'll do for wiring is I'm just going to have a plug here and then I can run it straight up to the kitchen because this is a very much a temporary thing that I'm building here. Um, and I think what I'll do as well, um, where's that gone? And I think what else I'm going to do as well is that if I put the fans in here like so, I could put this in front of it as well so that we don't get fingers touching it and that will hold it in place. So what I might do is have a look see if I can buy another one of these. Because this one looks as if it's got a bit hot at some point. Probably touching the, um, the flue there. So that's what I think I might do. Do it that way. Um, one, two, three. So if I build a frame around these fans, 
wire them up and then I can come back and fit it. The only issue I've got though is I've got these lugs here which I may need to cut out um, from the frame what I build. But I think that could work all right. So there's quite a lot of height in there, isn't there? Yeah, we'll give that a go, I think. Right, so let's go and buy some wood and let's have a look at see how we fit these out and then I'll show you how we wire them up as well. So before we make a start on making things, let's just go through some of the equipment which I've purchased. These fans are $9.99 and they come as a pack of three and I purchased these from Amazon. They measure up as 120mm fans and as you can see here they're already pre-wired for use inside a PC. But don't worry, we're going to be cutting all of these plugs off and we're going to be using a standard DC socket for use on a 12 volt supply. So onto the wood which I've purchased, I've got this from B&Q, it's 25mm uh, wide, 6mm deep and it comes in 900mm lengths. Total cost £1.82, I've purchased two strips of this and the width of the wood is exactly the same as the fans and the 6mm depth of this wood is exactly the same as the border of the fly screen which fits into the vents. So with that aside, let's get on and let's start making. So you'll see that I'm measuring this strip to the inside edge of the fly screen. That's because the two smaller pieces will glue onto the outside uh, in a moment. It'll all become clear as you see it built up. Once all the pieces are cut, it's then just a case of prototyping it all together, make sure that everything lines up, and then we're ready to start gluing it all together. And the method I'm using today to glue this together is a hot glue gun. A hot glue gun is not particularly great at gluing wood together, to be honest, but if you're prototyping and uh, there's a possibility you need to pull it apart, well, a hot glue gun gives you that flexibility. So I'm going to glue one fan at one edge and then the other at the other edge, and then measure up halfway in between and glue the third fan in the middle, all on one strip. So as I'm gluing the fans onto the strip wood, I'm making sure they're all facing the same way and that all the cables are free and they're all coming out from the same side as well. So once all the fans are attached to the bottom strip wood, I'm going to add the cheeks to each side and then I'm going to finish off with the strip wood across the top. And it's as simple as that. Now onto the matter of wiring it all up. Now the cables that come with the fans have got three wires with them. I'll come onto that in a minute. But for now, all we're doing is we're gathering all the cables up together, cutting them to the same length, and then stripping back all the wires. So as I previously mentioned, this fan comes with three wires. Now one of them is the ground, one of them is the 12 volts, and one of them is the tachometer, which is a way of the fan telling the computer how fast it's going. Now we obviously don't need that, all we need to use is the 12 volts and the ground. So which one's which? Well, on this particular fan, there is one cable with a white line on it, and that is the tachometer. So that's the one we don't need to use. And the cable in the center here is the 12 volts positive, and the one on the end is the ground. So we're wiring it up onto this DC socket, and if you look on the DC socket, you can see which one is marked positive and which one is marked negative. So all we have to do is make sure we wire it up the correct way round. So all I've done is I've twisted all the cables together from the fans, so all the middle cores are all twisted together, and all the outside cores are twisted together, and then I'm just inserting that into this DC plug and screwing it in. So now it's just a case of making sure that all the fans are working, and I'm just applying a 12 volt supply from a power block, making sure that they all run, making sure there's no glue or any obstruction in between the fans, and we're ready to go. Right, here we are back once again. I've got to say that it's a bit brighter and it's a bit sunnier today without the chance of any thunderstorms. So, let's see how we've gotten on. Since the last time uh, you saw it, I've just tidied it up a little bit. I've just knocked the edges off uh, a little bit just to round them up because I didn't want them scratching in here at all. Um, and I've also glued the power plug there in place as well and just tidied up the wiring at the back. Be under no illusions, this is very much a temporary solution. So the way I think this is going to work best is I think if I just go up and in like so. Well that fits better than I thought it was going to. Oh that's really interesting. I did come prepared um, with some wedges 
that I made up using some foam board, you know, what I made the cup holders with. Um, and I came with some wedges because I thought I might need those just to hold it in place because, um, you know, it, it, it could be quite loose. But actually, that is rock solid. That is really firm. I suppose the only thing we should do now is just test it to make sure that the fans spin around without catching on anything. So, I've brought with me my trusty power block here from Maypole and I'm going to be doing a review of this one in a few weeks time because uh, this is quite a clever little power block actually and something that might be useful for us caravanners and maybe even motorhome owners as well. And it gives a 12 volt output and as you can see that's working fine. I am really impressed with that. That is actually pushing out quite a bit of air. I'm really surprised how much I, I can feel it back here. Um, I mean, I'm stood a good foot away from it and I can really see already cobwebs being blown forward. <laughs> so I can see cobwebs which are down behind the grills there. They're being pulled forward, which means that that's going to exhaust quite a lot of heat. That's absolutely fantastic. Now I think to improve the situation here as well, let me just unplug this. What I have done is I've just cut a little hole in this grill here. I think we can all agree that this has seen better days, so I'm not too unhappy about using this one up. But I've cut a little hole there to let the power plug out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this around the outside just to make sure that little fingers don't go and touch it. I mean, it doesn't look particularly attractive, granted, um, but I think that's all right. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is how this is going to be powered when we're away in the caravan. Well, very simply, I've got a mains outlet in the kitchen and I'm going to use a 240 to 12 volt adapter, which I'm going to dangle through the kitchen window. It's the same power outlet that we've used for the awning lights. It's pretty crude, but as I've said before, it's a very temporary solution. Right guys, so that's it, that's this uh, complete. Um, as I've already said, this is a very much a temporary budget solution. Um, I wasn't gonna make any permanent fixing into the caravan. Couple of reasons, first of all, I don't know if this is actually going to work yet. Uh, I will report back to you, let you know how it got on whilst we're away in the upcoming heat wave. And also, as you're well aware, we're selling this caravan, so I don't wanna make any permanent fixture because if this does work, I wanna put this into my new caravan. Now, if I was going to make a permanent fixture, I would do things slightly differently. I would be adding some sort of controller into this that could automatically switch it on and switch it off, vary the fan speed, uh, depending on the temperature inside that rear cavity. That's actually really easy and very straightforward. And I will, I think, follow up this video and show you exactly how to do that. Also, I'm not sure, but maybe three fans is a bit overkill. Maybe it's a bit over the top. Maybe all you need is a one or two. Um, and if again, if I was making it a permanent fixture, I think I'd go for a smaller fan. Um, a smaller fan, which I could probably bolt to the back of, like I said, those grills um, and make it a little bit more professional. And certainly there's a way of making it a fairly permanent uh, fixture to the back of those uh, grills there. So, you know, there's, there's ways around it. So maybe what I'll do, once I've proven this works or doesn't work, We'll follow up with another video and I'll show you exactly things we can improve on this design and things we can do to incorporate it. But I hope that this has shown you that even for just a few quid, you can make yourself up a fairly good solution. Um, we'll see if it works. It may be a complete waste of time and if that's the case, yeah, there we go. I'll put a link to these fans which I purchased. I'll also put a link to the B&Q product which I purchased, which is this wood here. Um, and also some of the tools that I've used here as well. So I'll put all of that in the description below. But uh, any comments or any questions, feel free to ask. We're now ready to run away on our holidays, which is just in a couple of days' time, and I can't wait. So anyway, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye now.